Welcome back to the channel guys and today I have a video for you that's five tips to improve on Football Manager. Let's get into it. The first tip is a tactical tip and it is where your players are on this pitch is where they will defend from. And where they are on this pitch is very, very important. So when the other team has the ball, this is where they'll stagger, right? This is where they'll be. Obviously, other things will come into it, like high defensive line, high press. But in general, wherever that high press is, whether it's up there on the pitch or back here on the pitch, they will stagger in this in this formation, right? Whatever you have set on this little pitch. So obviously, your back four, you'll have your defensive midfielder, your two centre midfielders, your two wingers further up, and you'll have your striker in the middle. That's fine. This is a very common formation. No problem. But if you are a team, let's say I get promoted to Serie A this first season, which is the aim, and I am not happy with my team's ability to be on the front foot because I'm playing against teams like Inter Milan, AC Milan, Juventus, you know, all the, all the ones. I might want to, to be a bit more defensively organized to bring these guys back, right? And you might be thinking, what? That's very defensive. Yes, it is more defensive. When you, the other team has the ball, they, these guys will be in a line. Rather than your two wingers further up from your midfielders, they will now be in a line and they will defend as a bank of four. Now, when you have the ball, obviously on the flip side of things, your roles and your duties and their player traits are what affects it when you have the ball. Obviously, there's team instructions as well. But individually, off the ball... This is where your team will line up. They will sit here like this. So if you want in, um, a 4-2-3-1, right? And obviously the normal 4-2-3-1 that people use is like this, right? Not a problem. But there is other versions of 4-2-3-1s. So last year when I was playing on stream, I had a lot of success. My team wasn't as strong in a lot of seasons because I was going up the divisions quite, quite quickly. And every season I got promoted, I was like, right, I don't have the team to do this, so I'm going to sit a bit further back. So what I was doing is I, w I wanted to play sort of a 4-2-3-1, but I, I played it a bit like this. So that is a version of a 4-2-3-1, because you've got 4 2 3 one yeah but in the game my defensive midfielders were protecting the back four my wide men were protecting their wing uh, their full backs and my attacking midfielder was close enough to my striker to like be able to play with him because i had a shadow striker on there and it was a counter-attacking system and these guys defended in a in two blocks of four and then i had a shadow striker and an advanced forward last year on fm23 and it was very very successful i don't know why that's doing that <laughs> there we go we got there in the end so it's just something to consider. You can always, if you are thinking you're a bit too defensive in this situation, or you, you maybe you maybe you've got players a bit further back, just put a few more attacking duties on. Because when you get the ball, it will mean that they will get further forward. So obviously, if you put him on support, get further forward disappears. Right? You can obviously put that on if you want to. It's totally up to you. You can read about all these things as well. I will be doing a video that deep dives into player instructions like that, into team instructions over here, and how things work all together to create a tactic. So those videos will be on the channel. So if you do want to watch those videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications. But back to the video, that is my number one tip. If there's something inside that little tip that you guys want to discuss further, leave it in the comments and I will get back to you all. But players on this pitch are where they will defend. That is number tip number one. My next tip is around shouts inside the match engine. And if you guys have got a situation that's working for you or a system, and then just ignore this tip, that's no problem. But if you guys are a bit confused around shouts, then I'm going to let you know what I do and it works quite well. Um, it leads me to a lot of success of Football Manager, so I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, I only use three shouts. So um, the first one is encourage, and that's if I'm drawing, right? If I do that, it almost always has a positive out outcome. Not for every single player, but there's never really a negative one. If there is, there's an underlying issue like complacency or a player's personality is a bit off, and then I look to ship them out, right? If a player constantly reacts badly to any of my team talks or any of my things then it's a sort of on that player right if everyone else is reacting a certain way and there's one player that's not he's probably the issue so then i look to get rid of him so eventually i will have players that have good personalities and all react to the same thing so the first one like i said is encourage which is when i'm drawing uh, you can still use that when you're losing um if you're a smaller team that's no problem it still works um but if you stick to these three things it will be better than not doing them at all, right? So encourage when you're drawing. If you're winning, I almost always use praise. Now, sometimes that says, 
uh, that gives bad feedback to a couple of players. 90% of the players, so 9 out of 11, will usually say, well, yeah, thank you for the praise, and they will absolutely be fine with it. You might get one or two that aren't, but 9 is better than just zero um, reactions, right? And the last one I use is Demand More, which is quite a popular one for many years. You can use that when you're drawing and losing. You could probably use it if you're winning at some point, but maybe if you're Man City against like a second division team in the cup and you're expected to get more. But um, if you're losing, I use Demand More. If I'm drawing, I use Encourage. And if I'm winning, I use Praise. Just try them out if you're not using Shouts because it will give you an advantage and it will give you better reactions to each ones and your players will start performing better. So the third tip is in regards to work permits. And if you're managing in England, that is something that you guys might be struggling in. So if you want to see which players have got a better chance of getting a work permit, and even if they need a work permit, then what you have to do is come into scouting and then to players. And then if you right click on this little bar at the top here and you click insert column, go down to transfer and you can see who needs a work permit. So obviously I'm in Italy, so people don't need a work permit, but... In England, like I said, this is going to apply. And also, if you put in work permit chance under transfer, it also tells you which players need a work permit and if they've got a chance of getting it. Now, work permit chance is probably the most important one because it'll tell you, it'll just be blank if they don't need one. So you might not need that one. But the work permit chance is really important because it will save you wasting time negotiating with players that will, won't get a work permit. Now, it's not to say that it's absolutely true so like every single player that says they will get one um sometimes they might not but by and large i would say nine times out of ten it's a very good little tip that you guys can just put as a as a default on this uh, little, little screen that you guys can just quickly see especially if you're managing england like i said um so you don't waste your time and tie up your wages in other deals when you don't need it and you might miss out on a guy that you wanted really badly Tip number four is to use custom views. Now, I have my own there that I've set up. It's called Lewis's Main View. Um, I'll link that in the description below if you want to use it. It's totally up to you. I mean, you can use it and copy it totally. That's absolutely fine. Or you could use it and like, if you think, oh, that shouldn't be there, Lewis, or I want this on, then you can just change it and use this as a base. But using custom views is very important. So I like to get all the information on this. I like to look at potential, ability, value, contract expiry date, wages in case I want to get rid of a high earner maybe, uh, their age, their nationality, obviously their positions. And then these guys, these ones over here are ones that people might not use, but they're ones that I find that are very, 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 very important. So that is match sharpness, fatigue, um, agreed playing time, and also just the playing time happiness. So if we go to the first couple, which is fatigue and sharpness, obviously we know what sharpness is, but a lot of people don't understand fatigue. Now it's quite simple, but they might not be looking at it. So obviously I'm at the start of the season, so everyone's fresh, but as we get to around Christmas time and a bit afterwards, different players are going to be different, different levels of fatigue. Now that's going to be because of stamina, um, training hardness, like impact and training, if they've got more training um, intensity, if a player's got better natural fitness, etc., etc. So what you're going to see is players start to get slightly fatigued, and this will change. Now, what you can do with that to hit to, to nip it in the bud is if someone starts to get a little bit fatigued, you can maybe rest them for a game. Rather than not putting this screen on and you're never knowing about it, and all of a sudden being hit by about six, um, six messages just in this little system here, when it says RST in an in a, in a orange little square, and it says a player's fatigued and they need rest... Um, you guys can get in front of that beforehand and um, maybe give them a, a game's rest against a weaker opposition and you're not playing them in games that you don't need to so then they're fit in April time for the title challenge, right? Obviously, another thing as well is playing time happiness. If a player starts to get... Because obviously, if a player gets unhappy at playing time, they're going to start to cause an issue and you're going to get issues in the club atmosphere. But you, what you can do here is put this in and then you will get to see if players start to get concerned, right? If they start to get concerned, you've got a couple of things you can do. You can sell them, and then it doesn't become an issue if they're never going to get into your team, and they're going to weaken the team too much, um, and you don't want to give them time. Or, like I said, you could give them match time, and you could basically stave off any sort of mutinies, because if one player gets annoyed, they might call on a few of their friends, and then you've got four people annoyed at you, you're in team meetings, your atmosphere goes down, and you start losing games, right? It's just a little change inside the in the custom view that you guys can do that'll sort of give you an inside track early on to prevent it 
rather than having to cure it three months afterwards. Tip number five is going to be player trace. It's something that people often forget to do, but is very, very, very important and can be very key in seasons. So I'm going to take an as an example Adrian Bernabe, where in Serie B, he's got very good attributes for Serie B. He's got good passing, good vision, good technique, good decision making. So I want him on the ball as often as possible because he's going to be the guy that creates most of my stuff. So what I did was I made him an advanced playmaker, right? Straight away. But I also made him an advanced playmaker, not just because of his attributes, but also because of his trait there, dictates tempo. Now, there's a few other traits that you can use as a playmaker, like um, switch ball to opposite flanks to try and like keep the defense moved around and things like that. Um, tries through balls often, all that good stuff. But player traits are something to be used that can harness a player's ability and make them do things more often. So a trait is like a personality thing. So it's something that will they will do regardless of, of your instructions. It's just something innate that they know and they it's one of their preferences inside the match engine. So even if I didn't have Bernabe set as a playmaker, he would still dictate the tempo because it's the type of player he is. But I'm trying to harness that because I want him on the ball more often to do that more often. It's just little things like that that could be a massive difference between finishing fourth and winning the title. If every single player you are on top of this, it works very, very well. If I take, for example, my striker, Johan Bonnet, he's a six foot two guy, just to look at him really fast. He's got a little bit of pace. He's strong. He's physically very, very good. I'm using him as a pressing forward right now because he's got decent work rate, good teamwork, also good aggression. But it's totally up to you how you use him. But my point is, is if you have a striker that is a very good player off the ball and he's, he's fast, you might want to give him looks to break off side trap, right? Because he will do that more often. So you will get more chances of him breaking the off side trap. Conversely, on the other side of that, if you have a striker that has got very good off the ball, but he isn't suited to getting him behind and he's more of like a, a link-up striker, striker like uh, Firmino, was slash is um you might want to give him comes deep to get ball so they are very two different traits they use the same attribute which is off the ball right obviously there's other things that come into it like anticipation of where the ball is going to come and decisions of whether to do it and whether not to do it but off the ball i'm using as an example because this obviously tip can't be a full video but it's just something to think about i.e traits when you're going forward inside your saves. It can be the difference between having a player on a 7.1 or, or underachieving in your, eye, in your eyes to becoming one of your key players because you've harnessed one of his talents uh, to the maximum ability. Now, I am going to do a massive video on traits. I'm going to do another one. I did one last year, but I'm going to do an even better one this year. So that is the five tips. If you guys want to see all those videos where I'm deep diving into things like that, hit the subscribe button and turn the notifications on. And until next time, I will catch you then. Goodbye.